getting ready to go into our word this morning. So, Miss Lovely Katani Gilbert, um, open us in a word of prayer, and then we're going to allow God to be God in our midst. Amen. Yeah. Amen, Father God. As we come and approach your throne this morning, God, we just thank you for the grace that you show us, God, every day, Lord. Seen and unseen, Father God, you allow us, Lord, to move, to live, and to have our beings, God. So we thank you, Lord, this morning. Father God, as we go into your word, Lord, we just ask that you open up our hearts and our minds, Father God. Father, just erase any negativity, Father God, any, anything that is bothering us or heavy on our hearts, God. We just lay it at the altar, God, so that you can fill us, Lord, afresh and anew, God, that we will walk away, Father God, um, in a glorified state, Father God, understanding your love for us, Father God, your care and your concern and your watch over us. So this morning, as we go into your word, Lord, we're just allowing you to speak through us, Father God, so that your will will be done and that we will align to your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, good. If you're visiting or watching online for the first time, we've been in this series, Our Naked and Not Ashamed, for quite some time, and we're almost on the back end. Um, today, we're going to pick up uh, chapter 3, but before we do that, um, if you have your Bibles, go with me to Genesis chapter 3. Um, we are in chapter 3. Prayerfully, we'll be able to um, just say the majority of what we want to say about chapter 4, and then we go into some technical stuff beginning next week. So invite friends, invite couples, invite uh, people that you know to come and hear what God is doing in our midst. So Genesis chapter 3. Um, Pastor Tony, if you don't mind, you want to read, and then I'll just review, and then we'll talk. So if you want to read from um, verse 8, verse 8, all the way to the end, then we'll talk about that. Is that too much reading for you? If you can't find it, you need a big, okay, you got it? Good, good. I've been having fun doing this with my wife. And, and let me just say this, uh, come on, thank God for this young lady, yeah. Um, we are learning, we are learning, I'm just going to say that to you. Uh, <laughs> And don't, don't get it, I have to keep saying, don't get it twisted. Um, we're learning as we go and we're, we're adjusting as we go because God is doing some things in our life. Would you say that? Amen. That's you say. A lot of adjustments. <laughs> yeah, a lot of adjustments. So read for us then. I'll, I'll review and we'll talk. Yeah. Okay, starting at uh, verse 8 and it says, And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called out to the man and said to him, where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, the woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit of the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord said to the woman, what is this that you have done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me, and I ate. Hmm. The Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and above all beasts of the field. On your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head, and you, and you shall bruise his heel. To the woman he said, I will surely multiply your pain in childbearing. In pain you will bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. And to Adam he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, you shall, that you shall not eat of it, cursed is the ground because of you. In pain you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you. And you shall eat the plants of the field by the sweat of your face, and you shall eat bread till you return to the ground. For out of it is where you were taken, for you are dust, and to dust you shall return. The man called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. And the Lord God made for Adam and for his wife garments of skin and clothed them. Then the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us in knowing good and evil. Now lest he reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord sent him out from the garden of Eden to work the ground from which he was taken. He drove out the man and, the, at, at, and at the east of the garden of Eden he placed a cherubim and a flaming sword that turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life. Amen. Amen. 
Last week we dealt with the men. We spoke extensively to the men. It was Father's Day and we spent some time talking to the men. Um, today we are going to look at the woman. And so there's some things we want to share as it relates to that. But before we do, let me just briefly review the four things that we shared with you last week. If we can put the first slide on the screen. We just want to walk through those so we can uh, review and talk to what God is saying. By way of review, here's the four things that we share with you. Number one, we wanted everybody to understand as it relates to men that the enemy is the root cause of men hiding from the sound of God. So what we talked about last week was stop hiding because God here cares for you. And I wish you were here on Wednesday to come out and hear some of the conversations and discussions that we're having because it's pretty good. We're having some good, intense conversation. But as we looked at this, we, uh, what was important as we shared at that point, if you look at between verse 7 and then verse 8, in verse 7 you will notice man's sin or mankind sinned and they were okay with the covering they had made. There was no hiding with what they did and they felt that that was sufficient to cover them. But verse 8, when God shows up, all of a sudden the presence of God caused them to go and hide. And so we spent some time talking about that. The next thing we talked about, men are in hiding. The reason we're hiding um, in fear from God's sound is because we know that God's holiness exposes our sinfulness. Come on, amen. Does anybody realize that? You'll be okay by yourself until you get in the presence of God, then that exposes you. Come on, does that make sense? Amen, if you believe that. Next slide. Go to the next one. Let's walk through this real quick because we want to spend some time on what we're going to talk today. So man's sinful said, here's the thing. Our sinfulness is a direct result of our disobedience to God's word in our life. Very, very important. The reason we hide, the reason our sin is exposed is a direct result of us not obeying what God said. And then finally... Uh, we notice that men hide from God's presence because they're fearful of his reaction to sin in our lives. And the big idea, or the preaching idea, was pretty much stop hiding from God. And here's the thing that we ended the sermon with. God is not pursuing us because he wants to punish us and do all this crazy stuff to us. I'll say this now, and I'll say it a little bit again in, in the message. There is consequence for sin. Come on, say amen to that. Matter of fact, repeat out of me. Say, there is consequence for sin. Consequence. Yeah, yeah. But the good news of God is that he comes with grace and he wants to restore us into a relationship with him. So we're talking about marriages. We're talking about relationship. We're talking about all that stuff. So when, what God wants to do in your relationship in our marriage is to restore it to what it was like in the Garden of Eden. So when God approaches us, I know we feel guilty, I know we're in shame, I know all of that good stuff, but the reason God comes is to bring us back into relationship with him. So we're going to get to chapter 3, I mean, to, we're going to pick up at verse 13 and talk to that a little bit. Anything you want to say before we hit that, or are you ready to dive in? You tell um, me. Now we'll go ahead. We're going to dive in. I'll, I'll catch it up here. So go to verse 13. Let's read and then we're going to talk. Look at what verse 13 said, and then we're going to talk about this. So before we even um, pick up here, God says in verse 11, he said to the man, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you to eat? And I love verse 12. And the man said, the woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit of the tree. And I did what? Our marital problems is your fault. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you gave me the fruit. That's the problem, right? You keep giving me fruit. Okay. Stop giving me fruit. All right? So we could be all right. It's your fault. Right? If God hadn't have sent you in my life, I'd have been perfect. Oh, Amen. Okay. <laughs> no comment. Sure. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Let me leave that alone before I get in trouble. I got to go. <laughs> I got to go home with her. <laughs> All right. Now look at this guy. Look at this. Um, we're going to hit this really hard. Then he said, uh, who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree? Um, go down to verse 13. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this you have done? And then notice the woman's response. The woman said, the serpent did what? Deceived me. And I did what? Right. The serpent deceived me. And I ate. I want to just, a word of caution, put the next slide on the screen. We're going to hit this, say a couple of things, 
and then we're going to move into what we're going to take. So ladies, here's what I want to say to you. Men, we talked about this last week. Men, stop hiding, right? I just want to jump right here. Ladies, beware of being deceived by the enemy, all right? Beware of being deceived by the enemy. Very, very, very important. Now, let me tell you this. Um, you're going to hear this more times as we talk, especially when we get into the lesson today. The serpent was a vehicle that the enemy used to get to Eve, okay? So I know the serpent is doing a lot of talking in the text. The serpent is doing a lot of things in the text. Don't hone in to the serpent. I said this when we talked about that a few weeks ago as being the devil. The serpent is not the devil. The serpent was just a vehicle. Now, the reason I'm saying that this is free, this is free, lady, ladies. The enemy can use whatever vehicle he wants. Are you with me? So, so let me go here. Let me, let, me go, let me go here. I know sometimes you like looking cute, and, and men love it when you look cute, but he can come in the form of a man too. And if somebody at home is not telling you how good you look, he'll do a good job at that. Girl, you so fine. You better than red wine. That's old, huh? That's corny, huh? That ain't going to work. <laughs> That's, that's oh, that's corny. Help a brother out. Help a brother. The brothers are like, nah, man. <laughs> They're like, that doesn't work. Yeah. But, but be careful of that. Be careful of that, right? Because his goal is to get to you to get you to, to receive the word of God. So be very, very cognizant of that and be careful. So share some things and then we're going to move in. Yeah. So as, as we see um, in this narrative that um, God addressed man first. I mean, he, he addressed man. He didn't come and say, what have you all done? He yeah. um, addressed Adam because Adam being the one who was um, a, the head of the household, um, he was the husband. He was the one um, that was that was given the instructions to to take care of um, and to multiply. And so you see God going in, and He addresses first the husband. Although Eve was in was hiding in the trees amongst him, He directly um, uh, addresses Adam. What have you done? What yeah. what have you allowed to happen? Adam shifts the blame to Eve. Eve shifts the blame to the enemy. And the thing is, is that. Eve was out of order, and in every household, um, God has established order in our households. He has established order in this world. Um, God never uh, moves on his order. His order is his order, and as Christians, we have to understand that he gave us these, these orders that we might live an abundant life, that we would live um, in the ways that to, but Eve was deceived by the enemy, um, and she stepped out of line. She stepped out of order. Instead of her deferring to her husband, mm -hmm. she decided to take matters into her own hands, which opened up the box of sin. It opened up, you know, this is why we are in the state that we are today because she was in an or she was not in order. And so, ladies, when when uh, it is important for us to understand that. Um, God didn't curse Eve. All God did was he punished her, and we'll talk about that. Little, but yeah. we have got to understand God's divine order in our households. Yeah. So if you're having issues and things going on in your household, check yourself and see that if am I in order, am I doing what God has called me to do. It's not what he's doing or whatever the other circumstances are. The most important thing is that are you in the divine order of God? Wow. I like that. I do. Okay. I like that. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Check yourself. Make sure you're in divine order. Hallelujah. Next slide. Put that on the screen. I'm going to let that one go. Um, so here's what I want to talk about this word deceive. The word deceive means to cause someone to depart from correct behavior. And notice the word by craft, trickery. And if you look at verse 1, it says the serpent was the most crafty of the animals that God has made. So he will come and his goal is to cause you uh, to cheat and to cause you to entertain false hope. You're going to hear this a lot in a little while. You will be like God. So to deceive me, anything that comes into fooling you into thinking something is what it is not. Yeah. Okay? So be careful of deception because deception will come into our relationships. And we're going to talk about that extensively in a little while. So very, very important to, to know that. Now, we're going to talk to, the, we're going to spend some time dealing with the rest of the text. The goal today is, is look at verse 14. Okay, so God 
she said, the serpent deceived me. Now you look at verse 14. The Lord said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you above all the livestock and above all the beasts of the field. On your belly you shall go, and thus you shall eat all the days of, the life, of your life. Um, the next verse says, I will put enmity um, between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. Now we don't want to spend too much time talking about that because that, that's not the intent of what we're trying to do. What the text is really saying, that God released punishment on the serpent because of what he did. And he was really speaking to a redemption process that he was going to use woman to reclaim or redeem man. Okay, so the, the, the goal today is not to talk about that. The goal is to really spend time on verse 14 and the rest of the text. So I want to really spend some time talking there. So go to the next slide. Let's talk to this and then we're going to work through this. And this is where we're going to hang our hats today. The next slide, if we can get the next one up there. I want to talk to that a little bit. Okay, so here's the deal. Eve's punishment impacted her two primary roles, childbearing and her relationship with her husband. Okay, um, remember we said to you, let me see if I can set this up well, that, that this is pre-sin and over here is post-sin. Okay, so here all is well. They partook of the fruit, and then the relationship deteriorated. So today, our intent is to show you, scripturally and biblically, the problem in all of our homes and all of our marital relationships. And if we pay close attention, you can begin the process of fixing it. But I'm going to show you, hopefully we'll be able to show you from the Bible today, the majority of the problems you and I encounter in our relationship, okay? So notice, her punishment impacted two primary roles, childbearing and her relationship with her husband. And jumping ahead, because we're not, just, let me just touch this today. The same thing with Adam. His punishment had to do with his place of provision for his home. Okay, now it's very, very important for you to know that as we go into the text, Katani hinted at this. Adam and Eve was not cursed by God because of their sin. Very, very important statement, okay. The serpent was cursed for what he did, and the ground that Adam was supposed to work was cursed. Eve was not cursed, and Adam was not cursed. Very, very important, okay? What you're going to see is whenever we disobey God, there is consequences for our sin. Come on, y'all. There's consequences. God did not curse them. He just spoke and said, because of what you did, this is what consequence looks like. And I think I'm comfortable in saying that a lot of what we encounter in our homes, in our relationship is simply consequences of what happened in the book of Genesis. Yes. Does this make sense? Yes, and so as Pastor explained that there was, this was pre-sin and post-sin, so you have to understand, like, we can look at in today's world, and sin has just escalated to, it's, it's, it's like, yeah. it's crazy, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, but this, you have to understand that this was still the beginning, so Eve under, um, yeah might have gotten confused and was deceived by the enemy, but she knew that her role was to be um, under, underneath her husband. She knew that she was, um, she knew exactly what God had created her to be, the helpmate to come alongside and help him. And so when she stepped out of bounds, God didn't punish her for stepping out. Of, I mean, God didn't curse her for stepping out of bounds. God corrected her. And you'll see in, in the yeah, passage yeah. what her correction was. Yeah. Um, but we have to understand that, you know, any time that we decide as women, we decide to, you know, uh, move on our own actions, especially in a household. Now I'm talking to, to yeah. a marriage. Um, when you decide to move in, in your own actions or you, you decide to come up with a with the conclusion or the results of a situation that's going on into your home, you are out of order. Yeah. And what happened when Eve, when she got out of order, it just twisted everything up. Sin was introduced to the world. Yeah. And so if you want to understand, you know, she wanted, she wanted to be like God. She wanted, you know, what yeah. it, God created us to worship. She yeah. obviously wanted some attention for herself. She wanted, you know, to be looked up, to be looked at as a God. And so, you know, so as you go into. Away, you give my stuff away. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you want me to stop? <laughs> yeah, slow down. You're okay. on a roll. All right. She's okay. doing. 
Because I, I want y'all to hear that in, in, in the context of what we're going to talk about. Okay. So you said order quite a bit. You said order quite a bit. And just re- say, say order out loud, y'all. Order. I'm going to find define what she means by order um, in a little while. I want us to really walk through that. So that's good stuff. Because you want to roll today, girl. You must have been studying. Yeah. Look, 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 at, um, look at what he says to the woman. I will surely multiply your pain in childbearing and in pain you shall bring forth children, and then it says your desire will be for your husband, and he will rule over you. We're going to hang our hat there today. Um, go to the next slide. Let's talk through some things real quick so we can see what the text is saying. Okay, so pain in childbearing. So the first part of Eve's punishment is that maternity now is accompanied by suffering. Okay, so understand with me. They were in Eden, they were in the presence of God, and prior to sin, God expected peace, tranquility, he expected everything to do to be well. Because of this violation of order, let me stick with your word, she messed up, now they're living over here in sin, everything's going to be different, okay? Now, please understand this, different is not God's design. Come on, y'all, say amen, okay? Different is, this is not the design of God. Very, very important. This is, okay, this is the consequence of sin. So a couple of things he says. He says there's going to be pain in in childbearing. And so um, she was designed to be man's helper, the mother of all children, all that good stuff. And then what God says, go to the next slide. Let's walk through this. I just want to hit this real quick as we kind of talk through this. So there's going to be now, he says, the physical sensation. That's what that word pain is said. It literally means there's going to be sharp pains. There's going to be aches for a period of time. Secondly, they're going to be trouble, they're going to be difficulty or the state or the quality of something hard to do. Whereas, there's two things happening here. Number one, Eve, whereas you can have children and it wouldn't be that difficult to go through the childbirthing process. Because of what you did, the pains of childbirthing is going to be increased. All right? Now, a lot of women cannot identify with that because of that thing called what? What's it? An epidural or something like that? Epidural. Epidural? Yeah. yeah, I remember you and your first child. She was like, I'm going to have that baby natural. I mean, she was just bragging about it. I'm going to have my child natural. I'm going to be natural. I'm going to be natural. I tell you what, that first pain kicked in. I took her to the hospital. She walked through the door. Epidural! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Consequence of sin. Consequence. My Veronica went through the same thing, right? We, our, our daughter had her first baby, and um, same thing. All her friends, she read all the book, went through all the classes. <gasps> all that good stuff, right? Then that Eve consequence kicked in. Yeah, yeah, you get it now. You get it, right, right? And all of a sudden, she hollered, where's that dog? After she called me a few names and all that good stuff. Um, but, but all of that, listen to this, all of that is a consequence of sin. It's not a curse. Are you guys okay with that? It's the consequence of sin. It didn't have to be like that. We had it made. But because of disobedience, here's what God says. Listen to your choice. Your choice now is causing this to happen to you, okay? That's number one. So there's going to be pain. The second thing is this. Go to the second one. Here's the second type of pain. He says now it means anxious toil, hardship, hard work, toil or labor that is very intense and so expending considerable energy with a special focus on the physical pain that occurs strenuous work. So look at the text. And I'm going to explain it. Look at the text. Here's here's what it says, I will multiply your pain in childbearing, verse 16 says, and then look at the word again, the second usage of pain. In pain, you will bring forth children. Here's what the second thing, first one says, it's going to hurt you when you birth them. Here's what the second thing says, it's going to hurt you when you raise them. Yeah. So, so Eve's, yeah. Eve's uh, punishment yeah. was yeah. not only during the yeah. during her pregnancy where you get the swollen feet and you get yeah. the gas and, you know, you get the big nose and yeah. everything just swells up on you. You can't move. You can't eat. You can't turn over. You know, all of these things are results of the increased 
uh, pain that God yeah. put upon her. And even with that, even after giving that child, you know, women, after you have that baby, you know, the pain is gone. It's like, ooh, yeah. it's over. And, you know, you embrace the child. But then there comes that point where that child, yeah. while you're rearing that child, that child brings more, can, can yeah. bring more pain to right, you. No, no can yeah. in that. Yeah. Yeah, that, that child will bring more <laughs> pain into you. Yeah. Um, so you have to understand that, you know, when you've got that wayward child or you've got things going on in your life and you just, you, know, you can't, you can't figure out what's going on. It's part of the punishment. Yeah, it's part yeah. of the things. Yeah. It's part of, of the punishment, yeah. the consequences that Eve placed upon us because we, tr we stepped out of order. Yeah. Now you'll notice, you'll notice um, people that, that a mother will worry more about her child than a dad. Are you with me? Uh, that's part of the consequence, okay? Your child go to jail, and daddy be, he in jail. This is what mom will do. Mortgage she'll, the house. She'll pawn the house. Pawn, you can't pawn the house, right? Mortgage the house, <laughs> pawn the car. She'll do whatever she can. Why? Because she's carrying the pain of doing what? Rearing that child. The child will be out playing. Dad will be inside watching the TV. And mom will be like, aren't you worried about that boy? Girl, leave that child alone. Here come. They know where we live. You know. But mom now is carrying the pain associated with it because part of the consequence, you have to raise that child and that thing is going to bring you pain. Okay? Very, very important not to, to miss the two in the text. It's going to be painful when you bring them out. It's going to be painful to raise them up. So God is impacting now part of a role and responsibility in a relationship. Are you going to say something else on that? So this is what out of order can look like if, yeah. um, if you're a mother mm. or you have children. Um, and when you're more so pursuing a career or you're pursuing things outside of the home, yeah. have 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 overshadowed your main function, your main uh, creation, which was to to uh, take care of your household and to raise your children. Then you get, you you put yourself in a position of, you know, well, I can go out and I can get a job and I can do this and I can wow. do that. You start coveting a different thing when God created you yeah. to set order in your house. And so when you're not setting order in your house and you're not raising those children the way God has asked you to and commanded you to raise them, then you get all these other things. Just, just that's when the slim just starts sliding in, sliding in because you're, you're, you're in your career or you're into whatever you want to do, not paying the attention that the child needs to be, and it goes to the covering. Adam was supposed to cover Eve. Eve is covering the children. It's, 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 it's just how God has designed it. So when you're not covering your children, especially through those tender ages, through those formative ages, then when they start acting out, you're wondering what's going on. Well, were you there? Were you, yeah, or were you yeah. more pursuing your career? Were you more after what you wanted to do instead of pouring into that child? Yeah. Now look at the next phrase. This is where we're going to hang our hat today. Um, your desire will be for your husband and he shall rule over you. Repeat that to me, everyone. Say your desire. desire. Come on, y'all say it out loud. Say your desire, desire will be for your husband and he shall rule over you. Come on, one more time. Your desire will be for your husband. And he shall rule over you. Now, this is the problem right here. This is this, yeah. This you ain't is, lying. Yeah. This, <laughs> what do you mean? I ain't said none yet. You know what I mean? All right, you know, give a brother a chance. Man. All right. So, so, so listen to this. I need to set the scene. We're going to hit this real quick. And, and I need to slow down a good. In Genesis 1, all the way up to chapter 3, verse, what verse is that desire business? Um, verse 16, right? Up until to verse 16. Um, under, let, let me paint a pitch for you. Here's Adam. God created man. Adam is all by himself, just him and God, right? Now, understand with me, aloneness was not something that Adam realized he had. God said it is not good for man to be what? Alone. And then notice what he says, I will bring a helper suitable for him. Very, very important concept. Understand this. When the woman came on the scene... It's not because she needed a man. Come on, y'all talk to me. Y'all just say, you're right, preacher, you're right. You can't get what I'm saying. She didn't come on the scene because she was looking for a husband. She didn't come on the scene after much prayer saying, God, when are you going to create me because I need a man? 
No, 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 no. She came on the scene to fulfill one purpose in life, and this is my term, was to fill the void that God saw in man, okay? Man was not her goal. She didn't need Adam. Adam needed her. Oh, come on, y'all. Talk to me. Let's deal with the text. Let's deal with the text. The uh, brothers are like, all right, PC, you're losing me. You're losing me. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, she don't need you. She only needs you because of sin. All right, let me go back over here real quick. Yeah. She really, really understand this. Um, when she came on the scene, she did not need Adam because if Adam was okay by himself and God saw him, God would have said Adam was cool. But because God saw deficiency in Adam, he brought woman and he said it's not good for man to be alone. Now, Notice this in the text too. Don't miss this, okay? In the text, even though when Eve came on the scene, Adam was never her God. Mm -hmm. That's right. Amen. Her fulfillment was not in Adam. Adam's was in her. Oh, come on. Thank you, Connie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's, let's walk this out, okay? If you see something different between Genesis chapter 1 up to chapter 3, verse 16, you let me know. But I think everything we saw so far when woman came on the scene was because God saw something missing in man. And he, he defines it as aloneness. Whatever aloneness is, then he brings woman on the scene. Now, notice this. When the enemy came in chapter 3, verse 1, to tempt Eve, he did not tempt her with the man. Girl, I can get you a husband. Come on, y'all. Okay. He tempted her with God-likeness. You can be like God if you do this thing. And the text says that Adam played such an irrelevant role in her life, she didn't even see the need to engage him. Y'all ain't ready for this. <laughs> y'all ain't ready for this. This is going to mess you up, yeah. We can leave right now, baby. Yeah, yes. yeah. Okay. Lock into that, guys. She did it all by herself because the temptation is you can be like the big man. Matter of fact, you can become him, not that you can be him, right? Now, all of a sudden, now all of a sudden, she partook of the fruit, she eats, and she sins. And here's what the switch is it's gonna hurt to give birth to children, it's gonna hurt to raise children. And your house gonna be jacked up. That's 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 in the Hebrew. Yeah. <laughs> it's in there. Your desire, he says, will be switched to your husband. And I'm gonna get ahead of myself. And because he knows that, he's gonna take advantage of you. It is jacked up. It is, and we're going to flesh it out. We're going to flesh it. You guys okay with that? Okay. So here's what he says. You, you want to say, go ahead and say so, something. Yeah. So um, when Adam and Eve were created and, and brought together, they became one flesh. Yeah. And so that meant that they were to walk pericles. They were to walk side and side, step step and step with each other. And when Eve decided, you know, I'm going to take this, I'm going to go down this path without Adam, Sin stepped into the picture, yeah. and she began to, I'm, I'm pretty sure when, after she bit the fruit, whatever the, what kind of fruit it was, she was like, nothing's changed. And that, well, yeah. maybe I can get Adam. Maybe, you know, if Adam bites it, we'll become like God or whatever. I don't know. You know, I'm just thinking maybe this is, might, might have been what happened. But the thing is, is that when God created them, he gave them both dominion. They had yeah. dominion over the earth. And now you see that domi Eve's dominion gets shifted. Like, yeah. okay, so you can't handle dominion, so I'm going to put you right here, and you will learn from your husband. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so look at this. Switch. Go to the next word. Go to the next word. Go to this slide. Let's talk about this. Keep going. Keep going. The relationship is impacted. So notice the text. Your desire will be for your husband, or let me go here, mm -hmm. or for the man. Mm -hmm. Okay? So look at what the word desire means. Urges, longing, a very strong emotion or feeling or to have, to do, 
something. So the urge, it could either be a strong desire, it could refer to sexual desires. It could also mean the desire to dominate or to be independent of man. But something in you is going to switch where you're going to want the attention of this. Mm-hmm. Okay? Yeah. For me, I, I believe it's all three. I think it's a combination of them. And we'll, okay, let's, yeah. let's, let's yeah. wrestle with that. Yeah. So, so here's what it looks like. In some cultures, in some cultures, this isn't a, as overt as it is in American culture, but I can speak to like African culture, for example. The goal of every woman in African culture almost is to grow up, get married, and have children. Right? And here's what it looks like in some of those cultures. If you don't get married, you're cursed. Come on, y'all. That's what they would say. Okay? Now, and, and, and I want to say to you that the same is true here because it has switched. It has switched. So here's what it looks like. The reason, women, the reason you look so cute and you have makeup on and you came to church looking so pretty today, check this out. It's not because of the ladies you're sitting next to. <laughs> y'all know I'm right about it. It's because there's men here. Y'all didn't believe that, did you? Y'all don't believe me? You know what you do when you go camping with the girls? Your head all wrapped up, nightgown on, don't put no makeup on. But the moment you're going to leave the campsite, girl, I got to look right. No, y'all don't act. That's why you put on makeup. That's why you dress up. That's why you buy cute shoes. Your girlfriend say, girl, you look cute. Now, yeah, girl, I hope he noticed me. It's not about the feminine comments. It's about what the male will do when they see you. And hear me out. It's because of the consequence of sin. It's not the design. Okay? Eve had no weave. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, I know. She had no makeup. <laughs> That's where I'm going. Okay? She had none of that stuff. But in the eyes of Adam, he was like, whoa, man, this looks good. Right? You can't get them. Because they were naked and unashamed, because sin came in, we have to make ourselves look extraordinary to carry that sexual appeal. Girls, and we're tucking everything in so we can look like what we're not. Don't be telling the stuff. I'm sorry. I want to make the point. The only reason we do it is because of the male. Because of what that phrase says, your desire has switched. It's not for your kids. Here's what you look when you write your kids. The kids be like, mom. Right? But the moment you go around somebody who is outside the home, look at what you did. Look at how brothers go to the store. Feet all ashy. Hair on comb. They don't care. Come on, y'all. They don't care. Our brother can wake up from the bed. Uh, just let me brush my teeth, girl. I'll be right back. Hair on comb. Look all raggedy. No, nah, but you got to have heels just in case. Because of this verse. Does that make sense? Okay, let's walk it out. Let's walk it out. Yeah, so, just, yeah. so when we go back to uh, pre-sin, post-sin, pre-sin, you have to understand that in this, in, the, in this day and time, when you start reading the scriptures, you see where a woman was very submissive, she was quiet, she was unlearned, and that's because male was the dominant, the, the educator in the house. He was the one that went out and got the work, he was the one that was allowed to go to school and get educated, and then he would come home and he would teach his wife. And so when you get into the New Testament scriptures, you see where Paul is addressing situations in the church where he's saying that, you know, the woman should be silent, she shouldn't braid her hair, she shouldn't adorn herself because she was bringing attention outside of her home to herself. Mm. And so uh, what, what, what that scripture is saying is that you, you can't, don't, don't, you don't try and track outside, get outside influences to compliment you. You should be, your compliments and everything that should be going on should be coming from your husband. So when you walk outside of your door, you are a fully, you are a fully woman. You feel confident. You don't need to be looking or twitching in front of somebody or, or trying to get another man's attention if that attention is being at home. Wow, nice. Look at the next phrase. So, so let me say this. So please understand it says, um, your desire will be for your husband. Come on, say your desires for your husband. Say it, say it out loud. Say your desire for your husband. And this next phrase is the problem. And he shall rule. 
Yeah, you got it highlight. Law, y'all is yellow. Yeah, yeah. And he will rule over you. That's the problem. He will rule over women. That's what ticks you off. Come on. Amen. Come on, y'all. That's what ticks you off. And that's where the fight begins, right? I, I haven't even defined the word yet. But here's what, you ain't my daddy. Don't be telling me what to do. Come on, y'all. Can we talk? All right? Because we don't like the rulership. So, so here's what rule means. Go to the next slide. Let's talk about this word rule and then we're going to hang. Rule means to govern. It means to control. It means to be in charge. It means to have a person or entity exercise authority over persons or governments. Now, I like the one on the bottom because I want to talk about the grammar that's kind of nuanced in that word. It, a rule also means to make one a ruler or to give them dominion. Okay, I want to talk about this because this is the fight in the home. It also means to make one a ruler or to give them dominion, okay? So here's what the text says. Because of the woman's desire for her husband, the man in turn uses that to his advantage and takes advantage of the woman. When the woman doesn't like being taken advantage of, she rebels and the conflict happens. Come on, is this making sense? That's where the conflict starts to happen. So this, 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 this punishment now, it explains the challenges that a lot of us face in our marital relationship. The woman has a desire for a husband, but the husband now lords it over her, okay? So here's what, here's what that, that, that word, to make one a ruler. So here's what, the, the, in the active voice, here's what it says. The husband now makes himself ruler over the woman, okay? Here's the other active voice. The woman allows him to have rulership over her. Interesting, interesting thing. Let me go here again. This is sin. It is not God's design. One more time. This is in sin. Hear me all. It's not God's design. You guys are tracking with me, right? Okay. So, so, when it says he shall rule over you, means that in, in, in the hipful voice, it says here that the man has made himself ruler, and in some cases, the woman allows him to continue to be ruler. Does that make sense? Okay? So it is because the man now exercises authority over that the problem happens. Okay? Now, do what you need to do with this statement. Because I made myself ruler, it is not sin for her to resist my rulership. Assuming we're here. Right. I got to put that, get that straight. <laughs> get that straight. Okay. Let me walk you through some slides and let's talk. Let's talk for a little while. Next one. Next one real quick. So here's a couple, some slides. God never gave man dominion over woman. They were partners and no one ruled the other while they were here. Yeah. Let me say this carefully. So when you look at Genesis chapter 1, 26, here's what it says. And the Lord God created them, and then it says he gave them, it kind of says, um, dominion over everything that creeps, over all the things of the earth. He gave them. Come on, say he gave them. One more time. Say, he gave them. Okay, go to the next slide. Look at number two. Now, stay there, stay there. Number two says, headship, now back up, back up, back up, back up. Headship never meant dominance or rulership. It meant three things. So, let me clarify this. Because Adam was head, it did not mean rule and it did not mean dominate. Y'all ain't ready for this. Because you've been in sin for so long. Yeah. That we act like sin is the Bible. And then we, 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 add, we add sin words on our relationship and we function in sin. And we don't know what Ephesians 5 means when it says, Wives, submit to your husband as unto the Lord. And we say, I got to be submissive. He done gave me full black eyes, but I got to submit. 
Come on, y'all. Talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. Because we're talking in sin. I'm going to, now notice what the, te- well, I'm getting ahead of myself, okay? So, so let me go here. Let me go talk. Headship does not mean dominance or rulership. It means three things. Number one. Let me read it. Let me read it. Are you? Exercise dominion over the earth and animal kingdom. Right. You got not, that? I need these men to hear this. Oh, Lord. Protect and serve the garden. <laughs> Protect yeah, yeah. and serve the garden. Yeah. Be the provider. Amen, yeah, women? Yeah, yeah. That, that, this is what yeah. rulership means. Yeah. <laughs> Be the foundation of the home. Exercise headship. Right. So here's Amen. What... <laughs> now, I can get under that. I can get under that. You can get under that. <laughs> right. Under now, that. That's, that's very, very important. Here's what Genesis does not say pre-sin. Adam dominate everything, including Eve. It does not say that. The text pointedly says the third person plural pronoun, he gave them. So she had just as much dominion as he had as long as they were here. Y'all need to see this. Come on, y'all. So that's very, very important. I know we've been walking this out sequentially. So when you get to the serpent showed up and I talked about Adam taking it place, it almost seems as if Eve could not have done the same thing that Adam did. She could have told him, get out of my face, because she had just as much dominion as Adam had. I wish I had somebody in here. Just as much dominion. Nowhere in the biblical text up until this point do we see that one has lording over the other. So here's what that means in English. Adam was not the boss of Eve. I seen some brothers go like that. I'm out of here, man. No, trust me. Walk with me on this one. Walk with me on this. Here's what headship means. Adam was responsible for Eve. He was not her boss. And here's what headship means. Go get you a job. Go work the garden. Go pay the bills and make sure she's well taken care of. That's headship. He was responsible for his household, because he came first. Come on, y'all, talk to me, talk to me. Very, very, very important. We got to flesh this out. So protect and serve the garden, right? And be the foundation of the home. She puts it well. Exercise headship. You're not, Adam, here, the boss of her. Okay? That's pre-sin. Now watch the curse. Watch the curse. Watch this. Watch this in verse 12 when when God comes and uh, questions Adam about what's going on in your household. Then the man said, the woman whom you gave me oh, you to be act with, like whining, she yeah. gave me the fruit of the tree. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta, I, you know, so he just threw Eve all up under the bus. Instead of saying, Eve, let's talk about what, you know, what you've done, baby, that was wrong, da 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 He just threw her up under the bus like, you on your own, you out there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, I'm going to say something crazy. Go, go, to the next, go to the next slide. Go to the next slide. Uh, go to the next one. So prior to the fall, the wife submitted to her husband. It was not a command. There was mutual submission to each other. Don't make the mistake of reading Ephesians chapter 5 in the context of Genesis chapter 1 and 2. You ain't got to tell nobody to do nothing that they know how to do because they were already doing it. There was yes. order. Because of sin, Paul has to give instructions on how to live while still in sin. That's all that is, because we're in sin. So let me help how y'all not to kill each other. Because there's a principle God released that because of what you did, he now becomes the boss of you because of what you did, and you're going to try to take the boss ship back because you used to nobody bossing you. I wish I had somebody in here. And all of a sudden now he's bossing you, and you don't like being boss. Come on. Uh, but you love him. Your desire is for him. But the text says every time y'all fight, he's going to win because he's going to. I wish I had somebody. So, yeah. <laughs> God didn't take away Eve's intellect. Right. When, when he... When he uh, when he punished her, he didn't take away her intellect. So she knew what dominion meant. She knew how to rule. She knew how to have dominion over things. But when that dominion got shifted under Adam, that's when the problem comes because she's, th- you know, we think in our minds, I know how to do this. I don't need you telling me what to do. You know, because we have the intellect and yeah. we have the ability to rule. We have the ability yes. to uh, have dominion. And God wants us to exercise that. But we have to exercise it under the authority and the covering of our husbands. So, so pre-fall, 
the woman was exercising dominion. Pre-fall, the woman was exercising authority. Pre-fall, the woman was ruling the earth with her man. Yeah. You guess all right. Post-fall, part of the punishment is that got jacked up. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what we're living now is post-fall. So let's talk about this. Every challenge we encounter in our relationship then is now due to the fall and desire now that encourages ruling over. So she won't be so bad. Can't make it without me. You know you can't. Okay. Yeah, yeah, don't tell that lie. Yeah. She just desires me. <laughs> and, but here's what the secular world does. Watch this. Because of her desire, I take advantage of it. Listen to this. Because I can always come home and she ain't going to put me out. Oh, y'all done got quiet. Y'all yeah. don't like that. Y'all don't like that. Y'all don't like that. Y'all don't like that. Genesis, let me, we don't have time to go here. Genesis chapter 4, let me stay real quick. When Cain and Abel, when Abel sinned and killed Cain, did I get it right? No, when Cain sinned and killed Abel, right. Okay, good. And uh, Abel's dead. God said to Cain the same thing. Hey, Cain, what happened? Where's your brother? I'm my brother's keeper. What's up? And then here's, let me jump ahead. If you do what's right, will you not be accepted? And listen to the two words. But if you do wrong, listen to this. Sin is crouching at your door. Listen to the word. It what? Desire. It desires... To what? Yeah. Have you, but listen to God's, but you must do what? Rule or master over it. Those same Hebrew words is what's used right here. Your woman, your desire is going to be for your husband. He now will master or rule over. So here's what this looks like in the home. Here's what it looks like with, with, with Cain, right? Sin was crouching, and sin is waiting for opportunity to go get Cain. And the instruction to Cain is you've got to grow to the place where you rule over it so it doesn't have you, right? So here's what this looks like in the relationship. Her desire is for the husband. The same thing. She wants to get married. She wants to have a family. She wants to have a man. She wants to have all that stuff. And because the man is cognizant of that, here's what the man does. He takes advantage of woman's desire for him, and he tries to dominate. And the because we're functioning in sin, we come home and we say dumb things like, I'm the boss of you, woman. You need to shut up when I'm talk. Just cook my meal and bring my food. What's wrong with you? Bring my... You kind of get where it, I'm it, going, right? That don't right? happen in right. our house. And, and, and we act as if we're supposed to... We don't have that in our home because she, she got rulership. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we have a problem. And, and they fuss and they yell and they all this stuff. Now watch the problem. Because the woman's eyes were opened when they sinned, she also has wisdom. Remember this week, when she, you will be like God, knowing good from evil, right? All that good stuff. So she's, man, let me tell you something. You didn't birth me. She's speaking from open eyes. I wish I had somebody in here. You're not the boss of me. you not in charge. You shouldn't treat me like that. And because the text says, it, it's almost implied that the man's going to win, the argument escalates and escalates and escalates because he has expectations and he overlays his expectations on her and she's an individual and she fights for her individuality and the clash happens. And it goes on and on and on and on. And on and on. Because she's an individual. She has wisdom. And he's taking advantage of her need for him. Sin. This is sin. This is sin. And the back and forth. Mm -hmm. Right? Arguments in the home is all about who's going to get dominion. Who's in charge. Who's going to have the last word. Right? Right? And it's almost as if because of the sin, this picture has been painted, that that's the current state of thing. And so Paul has to say in Ephesians chapter 5, and we don't have time to go there. We'll pick this up next week. Um, 
submitting to each other, was it out of reverence for Christ? Are Wives, you there? submit to so your own start, husbands. Start at verse 20. Start at verse 21. Verse yeah. 21. Yeah. Submitting to one another out of the reverence for Christ. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body and himself its Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit everything to their husbands. Keep Keep going. Going, yeah. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands, you should love, love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it just as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. The mystery is profound, and I am saying that it refers to Christ and the church. However, let each one of you love his wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. So let me end with this. Sin. This is me, right? Messing up, sinning, doing all kinds of sinful stuff. That's you too, okay? Messing up, sinning, doing all kinds of stuff. We're the wife. Christ is the husband. So we're messing up, shucking, and you name it. We're doing it all. Pick a sin, any sin. We're doing it all. We're the bride. Christ is the husband. Notice what the husband does. The husband gives up dominion, comes down and goes to Calvary, Mm -hmm. and he dies so we can be made right. The husband did not engage the wife in argument. Mm -hmm. The husband took the initiative to keep peace in the home So we can have peace with God, y'all know the scripture, by him dying so the wife can be made right. Mm -hmm. The husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church. You want your home to be right, men, come down and die so she could live. Here's what it looks like lately, right? Once I got that, once I got that, I told you my wife was argumentative. So once you bring it up, I'll argue for a little bit, then the Spirit convicts me. And I come down and I go on the cross. (laughs) But guess what, guess what, guess what, guess what? The argument stops. It does. It does. Because headship means responsibility. I wish I had some. <laughs> so I got to love my house, my wife, like Christ loved the, yeah. My job is not to fix her. My job is not to change her. My job is not to mow her. My job is to die for her. <laughs> so she can live. I wish I had somebody. That's, that's it right there, right? Christ is the head. I am his body. If I want to be the head of my house, I better get used to dying a whole lot. Amen. So here's how Paul says this. I die daily. Yeah. Every morning I get up. Hold up, Katani. Hold up, hold up. Girl, we got a good day. <laughs> Every morning, you kind of get where I'm going, right? Does this make sense? We're going to flesh this out. We're going to flesh this out. Because here's what happened. With both of you alive and nobody willing to die, guess what's going to happen? And that's where in Ephesians where it talks about the mystery. That's what the mystery is, is that we, we have a sin nature in us. And we have to daily die. It's not just for the man to die, but it's for the woman to die too. We have to die daily because that flesh... That attitude, that dominion, it's going to rise up. But God says, 
I want you to understand how to walk in it, how to, how, to, how to get back into Eden, how to live it, although you're outside of it, you can still live in Eden. You can still have the blessings of God, but you have to, it, it's, it's not a head knowledge, it's a heart knowledge. And so once your heart is turned towards God, it's just that divine order. Christ is the head, and he died for us. Yeah. Out of reverence, we ought to understand that when we are sinning, we are sinning against Christ. Yeah. And so our sin, we should, we should always check daily, I die to Christ. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to go here. I'm not going to go there. You die daily. You die in every, every five seconds. <laughs> for most of us, we're just dying daily to sin because when we die to sin, that keeps the spirit in control. Yeah. And when the spirit is in control, your heart is in check, and you're, and you're going to love, and you're going to rule in dominion. And so then a woman can come up under that. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Amen. Let me say this, and then we're going to stop. I mean, we're done. So this is, this is below. Just drop this in my spirit. If, if one of you in the house is not saved, right, and let's assume it's the male, and you go home and you tell your unsafe husband, you got to die. He going to call the cops on you. Yeah. <laughs> So this is, the, this is very important. Don't expect an unsafe person to die so you can live. So if you're the Christian and you're the woman in the house, guess what you got to do? Yeah, y'all not were ready for that one, were you? So you got to be the man till he becomes the man. Oh, Jesus, we could be here all day. Very, very important. This is why the text says don't be unequally yoked with what? Unbelievers. For what fellowship has light with darkness. So if you're in that predicament, okay, and your spouse is not right with God, don't go home, tell them, pastor said, you got to die. No, you just go ahead and do what you got to do. Amen. And let God do what he has to do. Does that make sense? Amen. Come on, bow your heads. Come on, Pastor Vernon, pray for us. Amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. Yeah. God, we thank you today for your word. We're so grateful for the depth. We're so grateful for the richness of your word today, God. And we pray, God, that it has gone forth, that it's fallen on good soil today, God. And we know the enemy, he wants to take it. He wants to snatch it so that it doesn't manifest in our lives. But today, God, we declare that it's fallen on good soil. We pray right now that it's drawing. We pray right now, God, that it's healing. We pray right now, God, that it's lifting uh, folks up today, God, that they have heard from you. Uh, for such a time as this, God, we thank you. We love you. We give you praise for your word today in Jesus' name. Amen.